everyone. I'm going to get started. Uh, so my name is Cody, and I'm going to be doing a presentation on cybersecurity. So normally at PCC, I like to teach people about how to break things, but since this is a hackathon, I thought I would put together a uh, special presentation for you guys that's a little bit more about development and less about breaking things. So we will go into breaking things, but we will be using the way that we can break things to actually create some things that are really fun and interesting. So what we are going to be looking at is tracking hijack and hijacking smartphones with Arduino. So if you know a little bit of C++, you basically know Arduino. It's really fun and exciting because these boards are really super cheap. You can get them for $9. And you can also do some very interesting things like detect members of organizations. You can detect individual cell phones. And uh, you can also do things like bypass some things that are in place in order to make it more difficult to do this sort of thing and track people. So, uh, an alternative title to this is how to build a device that startles NASA employees by screaming when they're near it. So, you may want to know how something like this is possible. How can we tell that somebody walking by is a NASA employee? Well, we're going to go into some of the furthest, most interesting and creative things you can do with a $9 Node MCU using some of the properties of Wi-Fi. And we're going to create some things that behave uh, in kind of an interesting and fun way. And my hope is that as you go into the hackathon, you will consider some of these things because I am a beginner. I just started learning about this about four months ago. So while I do have some experience with uh, Wi-Fi hacking and the way that sort of works, uh, I just got into Arduino and I just got into these like fun little uh, $9 Node MCUs very recently. So I encourage you guys to incorporate them in your projects and use some of these techniques to make whatever you're going to contribute more fun and more interesting. So, um, who am I? My name is Cody Kinsey. I'm the president of Leadership and Technology. I'm also on the board of Computer Science Club. So our organization is uh, kind of here to do a couple of things. One, to help sponsor and support the Hackathon and other events at PCC for people who are interested in technology. We also do video production, so we make sure that these events actually are recorded. And we do things like fundraising uh, to make sure that these events get the support that they need and that we're reaching out to the community and meeting great partners like Supply Frame and uh, everyone else who has supported us on this great event. So um, I'm a computer science and electrical engineering student at Pasadena City College. I'm interested in cybersecurity, Wi-Fi security, um, open source intelligence, signals intelligence, and low-cost devices. I don't like to spend a lot of money on this stuff. I like to spend $35 or less. Uh, I also like urban inspiration photography, so that's what that picture's from. Uh, and for a lot of those things, I use uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and other uh, cheap devices. So my day job is I write articles and produce videos for beginners who are learning about ethical hacking for a website called Nullbyte, and I, create, I uh, created and produced a channel called Cyber Weapons Lab. Uh, I think we have like 80,000 subscribers, which is, is pretty cool to construct this year. So um, I study everything from using Wi-Fi for home automation to really sophisticated attacks against Wi-Fi, and I really like uh, privacy and kind of minimal style attacks. So that's kind of my background of what I'm interested in. So today, I'm going to be talking about hacking Wi-Fi, but it's important for us to define what that means. Now, you might think that means we're going to break it or uh, steal the password, but what I mean here is we're going to use it for something that it was not intended for. Now, that's kind of a common definition of hacking. We're taking something that was meant for one purpose, and we're repurposing it for something new and interesting so we can spring off of uh, the fact that it's there and enable things that might have been impossible before. So um, there's some things that we can do uh, that are good and useful, such as taking advantage of properties of Wi-Fi to uh, turn off lights uh, and save power home when you leave, uh, detect someone in an area where they're not supposed to be, or detecting victims of a natural disaster by the cell phones in their pockets, like perhaps if they're buried in an avalanche or if they're in a house that's on fire. Um, you can also do something negative and destructive. Uh, you can track people and invade their privacy. You can jam any nest cam or drop cam that uses Wi-Fi and make it freeze by just sending the same packets over and over that cause it to disconnect from the network. And you can also hijack the data uh, connections of nearby devices in order to feed them a fake version of a web page they trust and steal their passwords. So that's a lot of bad stuff you can do. Hopefully you won't incorporate any of those into your uh, projects. Um, so let's ask some questions. Can we use Wi-Fi to track the movements of a specific person or people via their mobile phones and laptops? Can we use Wi-Fi to tell when someone is home simply by being nearby? Can we defeat any privacy safeguards put on the phone to make it harder for us to track them? And can we force a device to connect to us without telling its owner and or popping something up on the screen and making them interact? If you have a, an exploit that basically requires the user to interact with you, it's at the point where you're tricking them. 
In this case, we want to do something or see if it's possible to uh, create an action on the phone that the user has no control over because it's just the way the phone is programmed. So we want to see if we can unmask anyone who is connected to a specific network before. And what I mean is if all of you have connected to PCC Wi-Fi, I would be interested to see if I could make all of your phones react so I can count the number of PCC students in this room. And this will go back to making something screen at NASA. So if we want to uh, kill or jam the data connection of any Wi-Fi device with a very small card, and then if we want to automate things that happen when a particular person's device is nearby, can we do those things with Wi-Fi? Yes. You probably can figure out the answer since I'm doing this presentation. So yes, we can. And we can do it for cheap. And the tool that we're going to use is the ESP8266 microcontroller. It uh, can be programmed in Arduino, MicroPython, or Lua. And it's really, really easy to get started with because you just plug it into your computer, you load up the correct libraries for the board, and you can start pushing code to it right away. Now, getting an LED to turn on and off is actually super simple. Um, in fact, there's a couple pins lined up that allow you to just kind of stick an LED in there. And oftentimes, for prototyping stuff, that is just what I do. So um, the Note MCU is also slightly different than just a regular ESP8266. I think you guys can kind of maybe see this is like laid into the board here. And uh, the Note MCU is just kind of a breakout board that has more flash memory and the ability to interface with it more easily. If you try to just plug into the little board with no USB connection, it gets, it gets a little advanced. So that's what we're going to be using. They're available for really cheap, you can for six bucks if you're willing to wait for a little bit and get them on AliExpress. And um, you might be wondering, why would you want to do this? What's the point? Well, there's a lot of things that are actually already in use um, using this sort of technology. Retailers use this data to sell certain shelves more expensively uh, because they can prove that uh, customers will walk by that shelf more often by tracking their phone's movement throughout the store. Because of that, uh, it actually became mandatory to start randomizing the MAC address that those phones were using because retailers like Walmart were tracking people so invasively that they could recognize the same customer coming back to their store and start tying other more invasive data. Um, you can do things like record pedestrian flow if you're, doing, if you're designing a city. You can track the amount of cell phones and how fast they're moving by you to be able to determine the speed of traffic. You can uh, identify devices by manufacturer, so you can tell Apple devices uh, from Motorola devices, from Samsung devices, uh, if that's useful. You can also tell uh, adult toys from other devices. So there have been some, uh, some applications where people will drive around and be able to detect someone who has a Wi-Fi and an adult toy. Uh, so, those are all devices, uh, those are all kinds of things that you can do that are maybe positive with Wi-Fi, but there's also a, um, a lot of other negative applications of the fact that Wi-Fi leaves a ton of data that you might not be aware of. So, mass surveillance in the Code Traveler program is something by the NSA that basically tracks when you are in a car with another person and then creates a, an identity link between you and that person. So, using wireless data from your phone, Government agencies can determine when people are traveling together and infer a relationship between those people that otherwise might seem like an impossible thing to be able to guess. So that's one big violation of privacy that having this amount of data constantly coming out of your phone or your laptop might give you a little bit of pause. Um, you can also do things like automate some spying. Um, you can see which devices have permission to connect to which networks, which can kind of tell you a lot about individuals. Uh, Whatever they have permission to access, they tell you where they work, where they go to school, where they eat, something like that. And you can also force phones to connect you in an attempt to steal password with phishing sites. Now we're also going to talk about identifying people who, who belong to specific places or specific groups. Because that's going to be kind of the crux of what we put together in order to identify some who works at NASA. So, how does Wi-Fi create a connection? Well, let's take a quick look. And if you open up your phone and look at the list of wireless networks, the way it gets there is from these beacon frames, which every router puts out um, like a hundred a second or so, and are constantly going out and letting every phone in the area know that, hey, there's a wireless network nearby. So, on this part of the smartphone, they'll put out probe requests that are just saying, hey, what networks are nearby? And those are generally using a fake MAC address, so they don't really mess with your privacy that much. Now, unfortunately, as soon as it detects a network that it has connected to before, it drops that fake MAC address and actually uses the real one. And we can see the last two here are not randomized, meaning if we create a fake network like Google Starbucks that a lot of you have probably connected to before, we can force your phones to decloak themselves and basically see their real MAC address very, very easily. In fact, we can just walk, kind of wait by a Starbucks, and that has basically the same effect of decloaking everyone who's been to that Starbucks or any Starbucks before as they walk by. Now, 
We can track users by the movement of their devices pretty simply because uh, devices reveal the true MAC address when they're connected to a network that they uh, know. So if they are exchanging data, if they're actually authenticated to a network, we can track them very easily because they're using a real MAC address. As I discussed, if the target is in range and they're connected to Wi-Fi, we'll see them. If they're disconnected, we can ping them with a fake network, which basically makes them be like, oh, awesome, there's a network here I recognize, drop their fake MAC address, and then boom, we can start tracking them again. So if we want to put a very cheap sensor in an area to detect when someone is there or not, we can do that relatively simply. Now we can detect when someone is at home and what devices they're using because the difference between being connected to Wi-Fi and not doing anything and, the, and actually watching a video or interacting with a video game will tell you, uh, you can see the difference between data packets and uh, management packets which are basically just keeping the connection alive. So if you want to just sit back a half mile away and watch when someone switches from their Xbox to their laptop to their cell phone, you can very easily tell what someone's doing inside of a building without even needing to have eyes on those people. Um, so for privacy safeguards, I've already uh, discussed creating fake networks, but you can really go a step beyond that because there's a couple of different projects that are really cool, one of which is called the Beacon Swarmer. So, uh, Beacon Scanner. So, I developed a technique as part of my research to uh, drive around Southern California and find the most popular wireless, free open wireless networks that people are probably connected to and load them up onto this so when I plug it in, it creates like maybe a hundred or so common open wireless networks uh, that most people are probably connected to causing all the funds in the area to not just decloak, but give me a list of all the networks that they individually have uh, permission to join. So that means for each phone, I'll generally get four or five different networks that they've joined before, each one of which will, if I create it, cause the phone's connection directly. So this is kind of what it looks like to actually go ahead and do this. If we were to use a node MCU to create a bunch of networks, it's going to say, I'm Google Starbucks, I'm Poppy Bean Wi-Fi, I'm Denny's Wi-Fi, and a smartphone nearby will be like, oh, PCC Wi-Fi. Here, let's connect. If, uh, if even something like an iWatch or anything with uh, Wi-Fi will react this way, which is a really interesting way of scooping a data connection um, from just a device that's out of public and isn't connected to it, you can basically just uh, create these fake networks until you determine the ones that are most reactive and then create a network to kind of uh, match the activity. So um, if you want to force a device to connect without telling its owner, you create a list that you know that the, the phone will react to, uh, and if you don't get a hit or if the phone isn't reacting to anything, there's something we can do where we can actually pull the networks that the, de the device is connected to out of thin air. So sometimes devices will send out a probe request, and these probe requests are really interesting because it's basically the device saying, this is the last network I've connected to, are you still there? And it's not encrypted, you can still it easily. This is an example of uh, the red line metro. So on the red line metro, these are the most common probe requests that were there. And you can see that it's actually a pretty small amount of networks. UCT Mobile Wingman, ATT, uh, oh, I'm so happy there's no network ones this time. Um, but for the most part, these compress into a fairly small list. So if you know a little bit about computer science, you can take a list like this, make it smaller, and remove any duplicates, and end up with something that's basically ready to pop up in order to force nearby devices to connect to you. Now, how can we detect NASA or JPL employees? Well, I went to Wiggle.net, which is a uh, repository of tons of more driving data that has the GPS location of tons and tons of access points. So I looked at the address of JPL, and we can see here that there are a couple of uh, JPL Wi-Fi, JPL Guest Wi-Fi, NASA. Um, so there's about four different wireless networks that are used inside NASA facilities or JPL that would allow us to be able to determine if maybe somebody had been at that facility or if they work there. So if we pop up a fake network that matches one of these, maybe we could unmask some JPL employees and see that, hey, they were near, they had been connected to a network within this building, they're now near us, so we can assume that there's a JPL employee nearby. So, zooming in a little bit, we can see there's EE Rome, uh, NASA, and then uh, uh, JPL Guest Network, and JPL Wi-Fi. So these are the ones we're going to pick in order to make our NASA employee detector uh, in our next step. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to create something that says, I'm NASA, I'm JPL Wi-Fi, I'm Guest Wi-Fi, I'm EE Rome. And then, once we have this smartphone that has been to NASA, or been to JPL, it's going to be like, hey, here's my new real Mac address, let's connect and we'll set up some sort of horrible screen. Now, of course, I'm not actually going to set this up all the way. I'm going to use an LED, but this is the way we could set, thing up, set the, uh, the function up in order to do what I proposed in the original proposal, which was to just make an awful device that startles NASA employees.
So we can kill or jam the data of a device with Wi-Fi enabled pretty easily. The two different ways of doing so are actually sending packets that disconnect them from a, a network they're connected to, or if they're not connected, we can pop up a fake network that captures their phone and then just drop all the requests. So if you've ever walked by a Starbucks uh, or a coffee bean and your phone connects to the Wi-Fi but you haven't signed into the portal so none of your stuff works, it does exactly that. Um, it basically makes it so it thinks it's connected, it's sending requests, but nothing's getting through. So that's two different ways you can also jam a connection if you need to make it so somebody can't communicate over their data. Um, so let's take a quick look at something that I built. Um, I'm going to plug it in and show you guys what it does. This is a detector that actually will look for the MAC address of my phone and show when it is sending off identifying packets. So I'm going to plug this in. And one thing my research also found, sorry, you can see that, is that different actions on a phone trigger different behaviors of packets. So if I am to turn on my Wi-Fi, I can expect to see a burst of activity, but also if at any point, I don't know if it's turning on. Yeah. Yep. So it's detecting probe frames from my phone that are looking for nearby wireless networks. That's not good because it also means I'm super trackable. But anytime you have your Wi-Fi on and you turn on the screen, you will send out a burst of trackable probe frames. Anytime you go to the Wi-Fi page, it will send out a stream of trackable packets. So certain behaviors, like being plugged in, for example, will increase the amount of trackable information that's put out by a device and allow you to track it either more frequently or with more accuracy. Uh -huh. So this is a quick Arduino sketch that I uh, forged from another project. You put in the MAC address of the person that you are tracking, you put in the name, and then I added the ability to uh, turn the pins on so you can turn on a different colored LED. And I use this to track when uh, my friend, uh, Buck, or me, I guess, are uh, in proximity to this receiver. So if you want to build something that reacts to someone, you can just take the MAC address of a specific device if you know it and program it into something like this. Now, if you want to, uh, yes, and this is the way that it actually works. The, the, so this is the code that actually like powers this right here. Uh, it runs an if loop that says if it matches one of the source MAC addresses, it sends a message over serial, it starts a cooldown timer that keeps the LED on for a little bit, and then every time we detect a packet that is not one of the ones that we're looking for, it subtracts one from the cooldown timer. So what's actually happening here is whenever it detects a packet from my phone, it turns on, it sets a timer for 1,000, and then every subsequent packet that does not match my phone subtracts that timer by one, or subtracts that cooldown timer for one. So what you're seeing is that when it turns on and off, 1,000 packets that do not match my phone are being detected, and it's like, okay, I no longer see this person. So if you want to tweak this code and make it seen on for longer or shorter, you can adjust that cooldown variable in order to uh, determine how many packets uh, are basically your detection threshold. Uh, so. Let's take a look at creating the NASA employee detector. So we want to be able to decode any devices that have connected to these NASA-related networks. Um, to find replies, we can go to Wireshark. Now what we're looking for is any device that has sent a request to um, basically anything that matches the first three MAC addresses of our fake thing that's going to be putting out a bunch of MAC addresses. Oh, sorry, that's going to be putting out a bunch of fake um, Wi-Fi networks. So anything that's trying to call back to that we want to pay attention to because it means it's a phone that's being decloaked and is reacting to our fake networks. So this is what it looks like. Um, the command to do this in Wireshark, which is an awesome tool that allows you to sniff Wi-Fi packets and see kind of what's going on around you, uh, is to search for the DA uh, destination address of so any packets that are, have a destination of our fake one. Uh, and then we just use the first three octets of the MAC address because those are manufacturer specific and the last one on this project are actually randomized so that it's not so obvious that we're just creating a bunch of fake networks. So even though the last three uh, uh, octets of the MAC address are random, the first three are the same. So we can track everything that's trying to connect back to our fake, uh, our fake beacon swarm and we can use that to learn more about the devices nearby. So using data to hijack devices, um, what we can do is use the list of uh, use the list of network names that are being called back to determine what the best one would be to take over as many devices as popular in an area. So let me explain that. I recorded this, I believe, in Hollywood and Highland, and I had a beacon swarm that was creating all these uh, ATT Wi-Fi Ace Hotel. You can see that there's 
authentication requests of devices that are attempting to connect to this network. And that tells me that the one that has the most is attracting the most attention of nearby devices. So just by looking at this, I can determine if I create ATT Wi-Fi in this area, I have a high likelihood of a lot of devices connecting to me automatically, and I can capture a substantial amount of them all at once. So in this case, let's define the attack path that we're using in order to make this device that screams whenever a JPL employee walks by. First, we'll identify devices belonging to a target organization by unmasking them with fake network beacons, and then add it to a database of NASA MAC addresses that have reacted to a network we've uh, kind of linked to NASA. Next, we'll track devices by their revealed MAC address to make known employees cause a device to scream. Then, we will record uh, which other networks NASA-linked devices can connect to. So we can kind of track them more effectively, and maybe if we miss them because they're switching channels, we can put out more networks that will cause them to react. Then, we can create a fake network on the device's preferred network list and take over the data connection by just putting up a, a, a network that we know they'll react to and make this on the phone screen by redirecting any uh, attempt they make to go to any website back to just a website of, uh, of video of screen. So that way we can actually make a device outside scream, and we can actually make their own device scream as well, anytime they're in range of our fake network. So these are some ways you can be creative about using the way that Wi-Fi works to either make something react to a phone nearby as a trigger, or even make the phone react itself. You can make a device that causes nearby phones to react in a particular way, either to unmask them, to create stage of man in the middle attack, or do something more useful. This is kind of a powerful technique, so I wanted to show it to you guys so you might have some more ideas about using it creatively as opposed to just uh, destructively as it very well can be used. So how do you protect against this, if you're interested? Well, you need to delete the networks that you joined before from your laptop and smartphone, especially ones that have no password. Uh, that's very important, because if you attempt to do this, uh, it basically, if you don't do this, then any uh, network in there, anybody can create on their cell phone, basically, uh, as a hotspot, and your phone will just automatically connect to it. So delete those networks because they're just sitting there and they're not really helping you or saving you that much time. Um, if you have high accuracy GPS turned on, even if you turn on airplane mode, it will continue to call out to nearby networks. So you can still track people who uh, turn their Wi-Fi off sometimes because of the way certain devices are configured. So if you're really serious about privacy, disable assisted GPS or high accuracy GPS because it actually calls out to nearby networks in order to find out where you are. Um, if you're interested in learning more about this, uh, then you can join the LIT PCC Discord server at litpcc.com. I also have a lot of articles on Spikar at github.io um, that will talk more about Wi-Fi hacking and some of the other things you can do in regards to Wi-Fi, privacy, tracking, and that sort of stuff. Um, you can ask me a question on Twitter at Cody Kinsey. And if you're interested in Arduino development, um, Wi-Fi hacking, cybersecurity, we have a great group at PCC that is really interested in all this stuff. And we're trying to get a get-together on the weekend with people who want to learn more about coding and all this sort of stuff. So if you're interested, please talk to us afterwards. We would love to include you and uh, kind of get this thing going. So thank you very much. And I hope you